good morning to one and all present in this session welcome back to the fifth day of our online fdp program on internet of things so today we have two sessions uh, starting with uh, uh, one session on security and privacy overview so this session will be uh, taken care by the uh, professor atul negi so sir has uh, we already introduced you sir in the first day of our, of our uh, fdp program so anyway i'll just reiterate uh, some of his uh, uh, brief profile of uh, professor atul negi so dr atul negi is a professor at school of computer information sciences university of hyderabad and previously worked as a director at uh, peace indoor india so he has authored more than 100 publications in peer reviewed conferences and journals he has co edited conference proceedings volumes from springer and itrb as program chair he served in the technical program committee for several international conferences he is a technical committee member of itrb smc in the soft computing division he has served as chair of the itrb computer society and itrb computational intelligence society chapters at itrb hyderabad section he also served as chairman of itrb hyderabad section during 2012-13 he is also a member of iapr through the indian unit of iapr he is an associate editor for springer nature computer science since january 2021 He is a reviewer for various IEP transactions and international journals like Pattern Recognition, Information Sciences, and Neural Computing, etc. He has worked as co-investigator on the Indian Language Resource Centre, Telugu, sponsored research products from the Department of Information Technology, Government of India. He is a principal investigator for the robust OCR project, uh, Department of Information and Technology. He was a co-investigator with various projects from ISRO, uh, MHA, and others. He has successfully guided eleven doctoral dissertations and while mentoring several others. So now, may I request Professor Atul Negi sir to take over the session, please? Uh, thank you, Dr. Nagendra Kumar, for this nice introduction. So um, uh, today I am going to try to show you uh, because this subject is a very vast subject. Uh, first of all, we are we have to get into aspects of security and privacy. in addition to that we need to see that how it is uh, in, uh, how the iot world uh, is intersecting with the security and privacy uh, kind of uh, topic so in fact uh, you know one can have a like, one complete fdp totally full complete fdp only on security and privacy okay so you can understand that how much i have uh, to think of and uh, to cover here i will somehow try to give some perspective of uh, iot as well as uh, security and privacy over here so uh, starting off so let me just uh, uh, go ahead and uh, uh, show you some of the aspects so uh, once again let's get back into what is iot and uh, here you know uh, actually my presentation is into two parts in the first part i am going to give an overview a slightly different overview of iot which is from my uh, trust perspective okay so uh, trust is an aspect of security where uh, even even with uh, the security the the point is that trust is a basic aspect of security and uh, we have that the uh, trust aspects uh, are uh, what is what is ultimately behind security so i am giving a part of my own research work which is related to the aspects of uh, security which is uh, uh, built upon the trust and how to compute trust and such kind of things uh, it may be interesting for people who want to do research because let's say it's a slightly different way of looking at security okay so as i go ahead so we can uh, see that you know the maliciousness the uh, insider uh, uh, attacks the malicious adversaries all these kind of things are the uh, important aspects of the iot security uh, basically what is there is that you are having network connectivity and because of network connectivity you are having the insecure web interfaces we have the insecure mobile interfaces insecure cloud interfaces okay uh, there is lack of authentic uh, you know insufficient authentication we are having insufficient authorization and the lack of the security configuration so basically it is it is a very uh, big problem 
okay why is it be it is because of the constraints so you have constraints and the constraints which are there uh, that is coming through the constraints are coming through because of the uh, um, you know so we we cannot assume that you know there is a lot of uh, power or energy with the iot devices we cannot assume that there is uh, there is a sufficient uh, uh, computation uh, available on the iot devices we cannot assume that there is sufficient uh, uh, network connectivity with the iot devices so there are heavy heavy constraints which you know we are all trying to address so and uh, so these are the the uh, issues with the iot devices okay so that is the uh, main reason why iot security is is extremely difficult okay so that is why that is why you know uh, this concept of uh, of trust management is a is a slightly different way in which we approach security by non cryptographic approaches okay you know those of you know about something about security cryptographic approaches are those where you are uh, taking making use of the uh, uh, you know the cryptographic algorithms no and as you know cryptographic algorithms uh, take a lo lot of computation time all right so that uh, the computation or resources are heavy with the cryptographic algorithms however when we look at trust management and then if you look at the trust computations the trust computations are not really very uh, heavy computations and then the trust management issues i mean the trust management is looking at behavior okay so if if a behavior is having an approach which is uh, different so that that behavior is if it is anomalous behavior okay how do you catch a thief if the, the thief is caught because that the way the thief looks and talks and behaves and suppose he enters some house where he should not be going so that is a behavior so in the trust management and all that we are tracking behavior and so based upon the trust uh, you know so and then we view every entity and we compute their trust based upon this kind of behavior okay so this is the idea general idea behind the trust management so now uh, what we are doing is that we are trying to uh, classify the uh, uh, we do the trust management and we look at it as a soft security problem okay so the trust is the uh, is a kind of a computation wherein we try to find out the certainty with the aspect of that okay so that is how we are uh, computing the trust management so these applications of the trust are uh, related to the user and device access control towards the secure routing towards the cluster head selection and mal malicious node select uh, uh, detection okay so i you know maybe i won't go into all of these aspects of the trust management but the soft security in computer science is not so uh, new it is going back to uh, as early as 1996 and there are still so many things which are there before that okay basically the point is that a soft security is the new generation of the security methods and here the idea is based upon the social based control to secure a system um, so uh, in the basic aspects of the trust is the trust management systems and where the behavior of a node is classified as good or bad based upon a trust value how do you compute a trust value okay so if i see somebody in front of me then i can evaluate the trust okay so that is if i am in a direct network communication with any device then i can compute a direct trust if i if i cannot uh, have any direct com computation i mean a, a communication with any device you know so this actually happens a lot in the wireless sensor networks in a wireless sensor network uh, basically which are those with iot what happens is that your your uh, uh, signal uh, and power and communication range is limited and then you are relying a lot on the forwarding by the uh, nodes which are in your neighborhood okay so then that is why you are getting going to get a indirect opinion of the different kind of nodes which are there in the network and then they are going to forward their recommendations okay so this is the way the trust computation will be taking place in their trust management systems okay then the, you 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 are going to collect the distributed trust and then you are going to try to compute that okay so this is the aspects of the trust management that is the node behavior propagation and then whether we are going to compute it in a centralized manner or a distributed manner that is related to the issue of trust aggregation okay so then the next point is that 
we have to build up tables no just like we build up networking tables we we have to build up a trust record and we have to build up the trust value and the tables on on that and uh, then we have to do these uh, trust computations okay so based upon which you will be able to um, compute this okay so the trust matrix so this is this is showing you an overall view of how this trust computations take place uh, now uh, there is a large uh, body of literature which is uh, related to trust uh, uh, management and all that i think so here what i will tell you is that the most important characteristics of iot with respect to scalability heter heterogeneity limited uh, resource power these are the aspects where trust in iot is 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 the research is taking place okay so uh, this is uh, if you are going to get to some literature and all that you will that is what you will be likely to see okay so then um, now suppose somebody wants to uh, work in this trust management so then i will suggest that they should use ns3 and uh, it is a discrete event network simulator and a simulator tool and you will be able to uh, come up with the simulations which you have with respect to that but let me give you a word of caution here that is uh, network simulation using ns3 etc is not a beginner's game okay so uh, you need uh, a good amount of uh, uh, rather very strong programming language experience with c++ and python and basically the idea of classes and all that so all the network uh, uh, simulation is in built up in the name of classes and if you want to build your own simulation rather your own you know, add your own kind of uh, um, uh, behavior network behavior into this to simulate then you have to write your own classes and add it and then you have to compile that and then build the simulate the simulation okay so uh, that is i think uh, maybe uh, ns3 by itself may, is a, a topic of lecture of several classes next thing is that you know uh, as i'm explaining that you know uh, what you can do with uh, ns3 is that you can you can have nodes so uh, the the node will be say a device all right so the the and the applications on that node so the basic uh, abstraction for you is, so and then you are going to build an application which is going to uh, generate the activity and it is going to simulate that and then there are channels for that or which the uh, network communications would take place okay then we are having the uh, packets and that uh, how it will be taking place for that okay uh, I, this is just to give you some idea that if you want to simulate trust on the uh, ns3 and the basic aspects of the trust on the ns3 okay so you now you have to look at the mac and physical layer devices and then uh, all these kind of uh, this is just a kind of a overview of that you know how the ns3 simulations will be taking place okay and then uh, whenever we talk about the iot devices some aspect of mobility is also there so if you want to add mobility then in the ns3 simulations uh, this is the set of mobility models which you would like to take place okay uh, so that is uh, an overview of what kind of mobility models so mostly if you see this this one here random waypoint model okay random waypoint model is the one which is uh, mostly used in the synthetic mobility models okay uh, there are some uh, weighted waypoint models are also quite quite popular okay so that is the okay then we have individual versus group mobility models so uh, again you have the hybrid uh, mobility models and there are many of them uh, themselves to look at okay so for this trust part uh, these are the some set of references okay and uh, if if you people uh, are interested if you go to um, uh, google scholar and you type my name atul negi into that uh, and then you search for and you can get across uh my my papers with co-authored with my student uh, where it is <coughs> uh, we are talking about this trust management methods and the uh, journal uh, i mean it has uh, appeared in the uh, uh, in in the, the journal okay so you can just look that up fine 
All right. Now I will get get back to somewhat more uh, conventional approach. I mean, the of looking at once again, we are going to look at the conventional approach of looking at the uh, IoT and the IoT security. Okay. So what? Let us try to understand that with respect to IoT, what is it that we are looking at? So with respect to IoT, we are looking at machine to machine uh, kind of communications uh, while it is uh, a, no it is extending to the entire world okay and the cyber physical systems and such kind of terminology has been used okay so this uh, view of uh, you know uh, uh, machines which are battling okay this is not actually a wrong kind of thing if you are able to view like what is the fight which is going on between the iot devices it will be looking something like this okay so as iot is everywhere and you are having the variable technologies healthcare smart appliances see the reason i am showing all of this is that see that uh, if you want your devices to work as they are supposed to okay and that that is why the security is required that you know now everywhere we are having these devices and uh, if you are they are not uh, adequately secured they are not going to function as we are expecting them okay and uh, this is again showing you that you know what is the widespread uh, scope of the iot aspects and so this is the uh, no i think uh, by now at the end by the i am still repeating this at the end of the course but i think by by now all of you would be very familiar with this kind of uh, scope of the iot okay in a campus if you want to think of it these are all the aspects where in a campus uh, iot would be applicable and again again so much, so much of scope for the iot market is there all right now the vulnerabilities which are there uh, will be uh, very many all right so the security considerations would be uh, related to the um, okay so uh, in in a, any security we have to think of first point which is called as the network perimeter all right and then for every device which we have with us we have to do a vulnerability scan all right now then comes the question that if the devices are in healthcare and the reliability is critical so then what kind of thing has to be done okay now how do you uh, get the malware into your uh, iot device that is through some kind of an attack vector okay so that is the basic aspects which we have with respect to iot so if you have any device with you okay and then you are thinking of adding uh, some iot and network components into that device then you have to make sure that it is uh, going to get hacked okay means it is if you are if you are adding network into it then you can make be sure that you know almost like with a guarantee that that device is going to get hacked or it is going to get attacked all right so that's why a lot of uh, people have the devices which are actually offline all right so so if there is uh, highly critical devices and all that it is better to keep them offline okay if they are offline then what what is it that we are talking about here okay but honestly that is the best solution uh how do we attack the iot devices okay so this is the set of uh, approaches where you are going to uh, attack the iot devices okay so that is we we can uh, get attacked because of the credentials you no know, meaning credentials means what is it that is when you log in okay so uh, see what is the what why why uh, why is it that this is uh, so easy it is because most of the iot devices are connected over the wireless networks and as they are connected over the wireless networks then whatever communication is taking place between the devices and all that that is uh, taking place um, through the uh, wireless and all you need is you need someone to be able to uh, capture the signal okay so you if you are capturing the signal then the entire uh, things can be there any uh, uh, passwords which are taking place over the network okay those can be captured and then you will have to be able to capture that okay and then once you have captured the data then one can apply all kinds of uh, cryptographic uh, cracking uh, programs to be able to uh, capture the passwords etc 
okay once that is done then anything and you know everything you can do because everything is open all right so now suppose we do a keep those uh, we secure the passwords and all those kind of things then the next problem is that if there are vulnerabilities then we have to update the firmware and the operating system in the devices okay but when the communication itself is a big deal how do you send the firmware updates in the os updates okay so that's why it's a difficult uh, problem in iot to be able to update the firmware in the os okay and then uh, you know many of the iot devices are uh, supposed to be very very cheap okay so the vendor who has built them will just you know not have any plan for the repairing of the vulnerabilities okay now next level is that if you go to the iot based applications okay so then the web interfaces which are there with the iot devices uh, they have having two kinds of uh, very very classic kind of attacks which are there one of them is called as the sql injection okay so this is related to any kind of a database and this is very well known in the uh, security world next is that you have the xss types of uh, uh, attacks these are all related to web interface attacks now another problem is that you know unless you are building with very secure uh, coding so i i hope some of you who are working in security and all you know that we we cannot just use our ordinary c compiler if you want that your code should be secure so then you have to uh, build it with a secure coding methods okay so uh, basically you now say like for example buffer overflow attacks you can avoid the buffer flow overflow attacks in your uh, c c++ code if you are having tools which will help you to avoid that uh, and you know you 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 whenever your your uh, code is vulnerable to that you will be uh, putting in the text and you know, will be putting in the uh, code which is going to help us to have the checks and seeing that the addresses are 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 uh, no the overflows are uh, are stopped okay then uh, the another what is the biggest problem with the iot is that you know so many uh, protocols which are related to iot they are just having the text there is no there is no crypto or securing of that okay simply because that there is it cannot be afforded all right and then you know the uh, securing of the ports is also required okay what do you mean by port so as you know that in you know, tcp as well as in udp uh, for the uh, applications to connect we are having ports now unless in uh, every other port which is not required has to be closed down okay but then the problem will be that suppose i want to add a new protocol or a new service then the port should be open okay so that's why there is a uh, problem with that okay then you have what is called as the denial of service attacks or a distributed denial of service attacks where a flood of packets is being sent to some set of um, ip addresses which are known to provide a kind of a service so if if a, and if i know the set of ip addresses in a particular domain name or i want to shut down a particular domain name so then i will be able to i will i will try to plan for a distributed denial of service attack the de distributed denial of service attack is the most difficult and as big entities as google and banks and other such things they are facing those attacks on a daily basis and they have security personnel who will be working uh, in a firefighting mode to be able to find the ddos uh, attacks and then to stop them and finally you know, as the iot devices are very small <coughs> devices they are left alone they are uh, vulnerable for the theft physical theft somebody just may pick up and move with them or else uh, otherwise they will pick it up and then pick it up and then tamper with them in any way so these are so many so many ways by which iot may be attacked okay so uh, i have uh, tried to explain all of these things but there is a huge kind of some a lot of things more are there for us. it's just a, some kind of a glimpse of that okay so as i uh, this is again from my previous talk that this is trying to show you that what is the a uh, picture related to iot no so we, every box which you see here is the box where uh, iot can be attacked okay so uh, you know you have you have the data attacks you have the communication attacks and the communication attacks every protocol which is there that can be attacked okay uh, 
the architecture the, could be attacked there could be attacks which is related to energy and things like that okay so this is just to remind you that this is all the scope of the places where the, uh, the iot devices may face an attack now let's uh, go get into some of the aspects which are a, a standard aspect of iot devices and that's where the attacks are coming okay i think some of these things i have already mentioned here before uh, that is they are unattended uh, they are uh, having low capabilities in terms of energy and computing resources and they are uh, having uh, wireless communications which is uh, having the eavesdropping to be very easy okay um, then the uh, privacy aspects are there okay now when we go into privacy what we were talking about is that what is the data which is being collected okay so as by as uh, now uh, iot devices are applied in a home okay previously you have seen dr nagendra kumar or even dr uh, professor uh, subhas they are talking about iot and in the home environment when you are in the home environment then there is a lot of personal data and this personal data would be collected so uh, it will be being collected all the time okay but then when whenever a, some some external attack will be taking place on the home network they are going to go after this type of data okay so that is that is why the home network uh, and the personal uh, data which is there is going to be attacked okay let me give you just one kind of a very very simple kind of a case study all right so uh, i think uh, all of you know that what is a thermostat okay the thermostat is used in uh, many residences wherein you want to control the temperature in that uh, room okay so uh, whether cool or hot okay we try to uh, set up the thermostat okay now i want to control the the uh, uh, no suppose i am working in my office and by the time i want uh, whether by the time i come home from the office i want that the the temperature there in that room should be changed okay so i'll fix a thermostat i want to fix the thermostat value remotely all right so that is why that is why i want to go in for a iot solution to fix that uh, thermostat over the Uh, my my smart home mobile device okay i may have a smart home appliance i mean uh, which is there and uh, that will be there in my uh, smartphone and from the smartphone i should be able to control this entire thing okay so that is uh, the reason that i will i will want a iot smart uh, thermostat in the first place okay and then what is the problem the problem will be that i will have to be um, Uh, looking for the vulnerabilities and this is how the entire thing will be attacked uh, over the internet okay and um, this is just showing you all the others other scope of things which could be there on the internet which are being attacked okay so a, if it is a smart grid okay so what is a smart grid basically uh, in the modern power management you have to have what is called as smart grid let me explain the context uh, in a, in a, in a power grid what happens is that the uh, generation capacity okay uh, has to be matched with the uh, consumption okay so in the smart grid if you see that the vehicles which are running on uh, electricity okay are consumers the factories where production has to take place those are the consumers the offices and cities which are being powered by the uh, uh, you know electricity etc they are the consumers homes are the consumers okay at the same time what are the generators we are having thermal power plant generators we have some other type of uh, renewable wind generators we have the nuclear power, power plant generators okay so everywhere they have to be in sync because the generation capacity and the consumptions has to get matched okay a thermal power plant is one of one such things wherein you will bring a thermal power plant up when the demand is rising and you will try to uh, bring it down uh, with that kind of thing okay wind generator we don't generally don't have much control over that okay so things like that <coughs> this is this is where everywhere the uh, power metering etc is 
is uh, uh, being tabbed at every source and that is being shared and that is uh, being shared to some smart grid controller systems and this is where the iot aspects are there and this is where the security and vulnerability aspects are there so in fact in fact if the hackers are very uh, uh, powerful they can bring down the entire smart grid grid and you can imagine how much kind of uh, problems they we will have over there okay um this is about the smart home automation and healthcare so here um with respect to healthcare you know everything which is in you know, a say smart watch and other such kind of things that is again the place where the privacy and the data issues will be coming okay so um at at the time of the patient uh, you no know, devices and uh, data collection or at all these things the privacy and the uh, security aspects will come in now uh, you are having transportation and all these cases so these are also the cases where the uh, security and privacy aspect will come okay smart parking now why is smart parking a security issue because the smart parking will generally have some kind of a uh, link with the person and the vehicle okay because there are devices to identify vehicles and the uh, smart parking will be able to identify the device and be able to put the Uh, billing to with respect to that vehicle, but if somebody has hacked into the smart parking, then they are knowing that where you are parked, how long you are parked, okay, and then from that they will get a uh, you know idea of your behavior, or rather where where you are going and things like that, okay. So that is that is the reason why the privacy issues are coming into the smart parking, and anyway there are so many sensors in vehicles, and uh, if you are able to hack those uh, sensors in the vehicles, then Uh, you might be able to influence the driving of the vehicle itself which is a very big very big cause for the safety issues okay now even for the regulators in the government this is the kind of picture which is there before that okay so that's why it, it is that uh, i want to say is that we we must come up with models and approaches wherein the data is uh, held uh, private because there is there is a right to be forgotten okay meaning that you know uh, somebody has done i mean whatever it is there somebody doesn't want to be looked up on google okay as per the european commission ruling they they have the right and google has no right to open up their data for anyone else to be able to see okay so these are kind of the things which are there okay <clears throat> this is just to give you a glam, glimpse of what are the Uh, challenges and roles for the uh, security and privacy issues um this again you know the kyc kind of thing suppose see we are giving kyc freely to our banks and uh, so many other agencies but you know uh, so so if that kyc information is is uh, leaked then that is a problem okay so these are some kind of challenges for that okay um the government and regulatory focus is also there with respect to the uh, this one so here the uh, <clears throat> security risk and all these kind of things are also there especially if it is you know uh, the the securities or in the I mean, stock exchanges and things like that okay so there that basis and uh, uh, we must have we must have the laws and regulations to be able to regulate the iot uh, behavior if you don't have that then there is a big problem so in our country i don't think so we have that whereas if you see these things which i am showing you uh, so many regulations are there in other countries wherein the smart energy and metering is uh, being uh, uh, monitored okay uh, in canada also and then connected car uh, regulations are there Okay, so the smart traffic uh, legislations are there in different countries. Say the one which is well known is in uh, Singapore. <clears throat> okay, so basically, um, the software can contain the vulnerabilities, and uh, uh, we are trying to see that how the uh, patching of the IoT devices should be taking place. and uh, that is the tag cloud which you are having okay so <clears throat> so uh, 
uh, IoT policies and uh, procedures and the vulnerability management and the risk management aspect should be there. Okay. One last word is here at the bottom here, which is called as forensics. Forensics means that uh, suppose a data breach has taken place. We need to uh, find out that who has caused the data breach. Who is it that is who is it that is behind the data breach? So who is behind the data breach? So then all the network traffic issues, etc., which are there with uh, respect to that and how it is, that has to be uh, looked at and all that collected. And then that from the forensics and the data which is gathered, we have to deduce that who is behind the risk and all that, that has to be presented uh, to some kind of a <clears throat> legal entity and then the legal cases, etc., has to be filed against such people. So that is the kind of thing. However, at the same time of thing that, you know, we need to plan for the forensics and the logging of the data. Okay. How do you uh, secure the usual things that do you have a firewall and uh, do we have an intrusion detection system? Uh, is, there, is there an intrusion protection system? Generally, we don't think about these things when we are talking about our home. But if I'm looking at a campus network and such things, then these kind of things are, are very much required. Okay. And uh, IP addresses, both I mean, IPv4 addresses, forget about it, but with uh, IPv6 addresses now there and uh, networks being working on, on that. So the complexity of the networks will be there and uh, whether we should go for a isolated network or we should have for a segmented network, all these kind of things are, uh, are, are, are being thought about for the IoT security. Okay, and of course, uh, we have to have uh, the, everyone has to work together, basically researchers, vendors, and the procurements, everybody has to work together to be able to come up with the uh, combined solution. Okay, now IoT is seen as an opportunity, but it is also a threat. Okay, so if it is not understood properly, if it is misconfigured, then IoT will be posing a huge risk to our data, will be posing a huge risk to our privacy as well as our uh, safety. Okay, but if we are understanding IoT properly, then we can have a uh, improved lifestyle. Okay, we will have a proper communications wherein our communications are going to all the proper places and the delivery of the services and things like that. Okay, so I think this is the uh, complete part of this one and I have other things to show also. Maybe I can just take a small pause to see that if there are any questions in the chat, I'll uh, try to see that. Uh, okay, as far as I can see, there aren't any questions in the chat. So let me try to go over to the next part of uh, my, uh, my showing you things is that I, I wish to show that, no, see, let, let me say a bit about what uh, the faculty development programs are about. Okay, so the the level in faculty development programs, which uh, I, I would ex expect is that we, we, the faculty who are delivering the talks need to be able to show uh, something more than, you know, we have to treat faculty as more uh, at a higher level. So this is not like, you know, just my, uh, preparing a, a PPT and uh, that the PPT is going to be passed on to the uh, participants. And then, uh, you know, so in fact, what we should be able to do is we should expose the faculty to good literature. Okay, so related to my topic here, then I wanted to show you that there is this uh, good uh, research paper, which would be very useful for anyone who is going to go into the aspects of IoT security. Okay, so this is the paper by uh, Vikas Hasija and others, and this is published in the ITRIPLI Access. Okay, so uh, if you know this title and all that, you will be able to access this uh, publication. And the point here is that we are talking about uh, the, it's a survey. A survey article is one where all aspects are covered. Okay, and here this is a very good survey in the sense that they are looking at the application areas, 
they're looking at the security threats and they're trying to get some solution architecture. So that's why I thought that this is a very good paper for you all to see that. Okay, now let's, let me just sort of uh, skim you through this paper so that later on you'll be able to uh, get, get into the details of that. Okay, so. <clears throat> Okay, so here if you see, see, whenever we read research uh, papers. So, sorry to interrupt you, sir. Uh, we uh, could not see the research paper, sir. Is it? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Mm. I'll have to... Maybe I should show my desktop. Uh, yes, sir. Maybe uh, select, share the research paper, sir. You can, the share screen, you can select that particular window, sir. Yeah, I have a Acrobat open. Yes, sir. Is yes, sir. Now it is now? visible, sir. Yes, sir. It is coming okay. now, sir. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. I'll, I'll then go back to the beginning. So now you, I think the title is visible. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So, uh, as I was saying that, you know, now you can see the title also. So the title is on the survey on IoT security and the application areas, uh, which are the security threats and the solution architectures. So that is uh, being talked about in this paper. And as, as you can see here on the right corner, it is published at the IEEE access. So uh, one thing in is, you know, sometimes people say that, sir, we can't get these IEEE journals and all that. Uh, but let me tell you one thing. What happens is that in IEEE access, all the papers which are published in IEEE access are open access. All right. So you don't have to pay any subscription or anything. It is it is anyone who is getting the internet access should be able to access the IEEE uh, access papers. So that is uh, the reason why I am showing you this paper because uh, uh, any and everyone would be able to get this paper. Okay. Sorry. So. Um, correct. So then, so now the first thing to read in any research paper is the abstract. Okay. So what do you see when you see this abstract is that what are the aspects uh, of the technologies which they are covering? So they are looking at the technologies like blockchain, fog computing, edge computing, and they are also saying that how machine learning would be useful to increase the level of security in this particular paper. Okay, so these are the very important reasons why I am recommending this paper to you for the further reading and for your to, to be able to uh, study and you know, so uh, take up any further research or such kind of things. Okay, now the, the other points which they are here is that uh, <clears throat> um, they are also looking at the architecture aspects and the solutions. And so what they are giving is that reviewing the security related challenges and the sources of the threat in the IoT applications. All right. So that is basically what it is. Then the next thing generally we do in reading research papers is that we try to read the introduction. Okay. And, uh, and as you can see, reference numbers are provided here. Okay. So the first thing to note is that what is the number of the IoT devices which is there. If you remember in my slides, I said that the number of de connect, uh, devices and connections will be uh, going to 27 billion in 2024. Okay, so uh, this itself shows that how the uh, IoT growth is going to continue. Okay, uh, some figures etc are also shown which you will be able to see, and. Uh, what is the important statement here? Uh, the, you have huge number of applications, but there is the issue of the security and privacy. Basically, he's saying that without a trusted and interoperable IoT ecosystem, the emerging IoT applications would not be able to reach the high demand and they will lose all their potential, uh, all their potential and their credibility, okay? And here also they are showing that in this part, they're showing that what are the factors which are there with respect to the uh, IoT security, okay? So, 
Okay. Next here they are showing that you know what are the uh, previous IoT architectures which is there, and uh, how the connections to the clouds are there, and how the future IoT architectures will be uh, involving the peer-to-peer -peer networks and uh, that kind of uh, our network architecture would be a bit uh, different. Okay. Uh, now this this table which they have is where they are comparing the IoT devices and the IoT devices. So what kind of difference is there with respect to the IoT devices and the IoT devices? Okay, so the, it's understanding, uh, this understanding is very important to understand that what the resources are there with the IoT devices so that they, they will be able to, uh, and, and in, in corresponding to those resources in the IoT devices for the IoT security, what is it that is required? Okay. So every IoT device has to be protected with respect to the security measures. Okay, that is that is the most important thing to do. And we need to understand that what are the limitations of the IoT devices in terms of the software and hardware. Okay, and then the lightweight algorithms, we need to find out what are the lightweight algorithms for the IoT security. Okay, so that is the basic thing. Now, we also need to understand that IoT devices are hetero heterogeneous. Okay, what do we mean by that? Heterogeneous means that you know, uh, the number of protocols which the IoT devices may have will might be very many. It's not just a simple small level. Okay, the, the type of hardware which is there with the IoT devices, their CPUs, their types of memories, the type of sensors. Okay, so everything is adding to the uh, diversity and the kinds of drivers and <clears throat> modules which are there with the software which is there with the IoT devices is hugely tremendous. And this is called as the attack surface. Okay, so, so IoT devices have a large attack surface. Okay, so that's why they are highly vulnerable. Okay, that is the point to understand from this. Here they are giving various uh, uh, cases of like I have just mentioned briefly, you know, previously about the DDoS attacks and things like that. Okay, now botnet attacks and other such kind of things have been also been attacked on the IoT devices. Okay, I told you about smart grid and all that. That is all part of the cyber physical systems. Okay, so <clears throat> okay, so that is the okay. Next in these articles, you need to look at. What are their references which are related to surveys and what are their contributions? The authors have also published some of the other things. So like this, they, they are uh, talking about that. So what is it, the, why you should read this paper? So that, why to read this paper? That is given here these points and the main contributions they are listing as, they are giving a classification of the different IoT applications and the specific security and privacy issues related to those applications. Okay. They are giving the detailed explanation of the different threat sources. Okay. And they are giving the recommendations to improve that. Okay. So that is that is basically the main main thing over their paper. Okay. Then um, here they are going into the details. We will skip, we will skip the details, but this table is important because if you want to know which are the, re the related uh, references on the IoT security. Okay. So this is a very good set of uh, references which you are give, getting readily from this from this paper on the surveys on the IoT security. Okay. So next is the okay. We will skip we will skip these things. Okay. We will skip the applications which are there. Anyway, you can see that later on. And then here you can see that what are the sources of the security threats. Okay. So now just let's not read in detail. We'll, we'll just look at the headings which are there here. Okay, if you see the headings here, that, <clears throat> so they are, they are discussing the threats and the threats are at the uh, four layers. Okay, the threats are at the sensing layer, the threats are at the network layer, the threats are at the middleware layer, and the threats are at the application layer. Okay, so, uh, each of these layers would be in kind of an IoT application. And uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, there is a heterogeneity. 
So there will be a diverse set of technologies that will bring in the uh, number of issues and the threats. Okay, so then here they go through the, the details in every layer. Okay, so this is on the, at the threats at the sensing layer. Okay, and uh, here you can see that this is a nice figure uh, <coughs> which will be giving you some idea that what are the kind of uh, attacks which are there on the IoT. Okay, so let me just uh, talk very, very briefly about this figure for a couple of minutes. So you can see here on the left that there is the sensing layer. Now, sensing layer means it is that it is uh, related to the sensor and the communication uh, of the sensor data. So here, you know, uh, you can, what are the kind of uh, threads which are there? The node itself might get captured or else they would be a, you know, I want to, I want to uh, make sure that the, the node is not functioning properly. So I may try to inject a, a wrong kind of a code into that sensor or into that device. Okay, so that will be done through a malicious code injection attack or else I will try to make that sensor to show false data. So that I will try to inject the false data into that or else there are the other uh, channel attacks. This is a side channel attack, okay. Uh, side channel is like, you know, say for example, uh, I want to secure the data coming from my keyboard. Okay, so uh, instead of capturing the data directly from my keyboard, the side channel is trying to see that how much of energy is being used when I'm typing certain symbol, okay, how long my key pressed uh, thing is coming and what is the sequence of the key pressed. These kind of things which are indirectly coming from the keyboard device is an is a example of a side channel. Okay, so that is you have so many kinds of the side channel attacks. Okay, then we have eavesdropping and interference. As I mentioned earlier that all the network uh, interfaces are there. So you just capture the network signal and then you can do the eavesdropping. But suppose you don't want, don't care for the network signal. You will transmit your own network signal by which the device cannot be accessed or communicated. That is called as interference. Okay, so that will be a kind of an attack on, on the device through the interference. Okay. Other, other kind of ways is that, see, I, if I want to bring down a IoT device, the, the best way to attack is that when you want to bring it down together, all together, okay? You want to exhaust its battery, then what do you do? You make sure that it is expending energy continuously. How do you do that? Many IoT devices, they conserve energy by going to sleep. Okay. So, so in this case, what, what happens is that they, they will they will attack the device and not allow it to go to sleep. So what will happen is that with so much of this uh, uh, energy being expended, uh, the in, entire energy with the uh, available with the IoT device will get expended, and then uh, it, it 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 will come down off its own because its energy is expended simply because you prevented it from going into the sleep mode. Okay. Uh, other other attacks would be it is possible that you know that there are some booting vulnerabilities and there you might be having some attacks. Okay, so this is some give you some idea of the attacks at the sensing layer. Next, we have so many attacks which are there, which are there at the application layer. Okay, so if I may quickly go through the attacks which are there at an application layer, is that you know uh, at the application layer we are expecting that data is available. So you might just uh, go ahead and steal the data or uh, I am trying to access the device and I want to access certain ports and things like that. So then I may control the access and I will uh, uh, capture all the access control kind of thing and I will have a access control attack. Further, I may have that, you know, whatever service the device is doing, I'll try to uh, in interrupt the service on that. Okay, or else there will be some intervention which is not at all uh, proper. You may pose as a user for the device, but then you may do some kind of a wrong operations, which is going to uh, make that device to go into a different type of loop. Or else, like I have explained to you earlier, the distributed denial of service attacks could be there, and you may have some kind of uh, code injection attacks, which is, as I have explained to you, to you earlier, SQL injection and XSS injection attacks, which are there. Okay, this is at the application there. In between the sensing layer and the application there, 
we have what is called as a network layer the middleware and the gateway so in the network layer we we can again have the uh, routing attacks that is very common in the network layer okay and uh, so the networking attacks will make sure that the network information in 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 the iot network which it is there and it will not able to forward it to the right gateway so this way this networking attacks will would be at the routing level then um, this this kind of any anyway you, you can you can inject huge amount of false false uh, network packets and that will also be a ddos and uh, dos kind of attack at the network layer level okay now if you are talking about a middle middleware layer so in a middleware like you know you you can simply have lots of uh, packets going in and you can inject huge amount of data into that okay so that will be uh, a flooding kind of an attack okay uh, or else as i mentioned earlier even at the middleware sql injection attacks could be possible okay then there is in the network kind of thing man in the man in the middle attack is very common what is that that is you intercept the network data and you modify that network data and you send it uh, to the either parties and you you make it as if you are uh, i mean <clears throat> as you are in a node in between and you pose a nose in node no, a, a trusted node in the between and capture all the data from both of the sides which are there okay uh gateway is uh, the gateway attacks are there with respect to the uh, interfaces which are there and the gateway attacks are there with respect to the end to end kind of encryption uh, methods which are which are there okay so this is just an overview of the kind of attacks which are which are there the rest of the paper is going to some details of that and the last part is related to the blockchain uh, kind of and fog and edge kind of things okay uh, so I, this uh, i won't go into the details where they are explaining the blockchain and basic things which are related to that how how, you, how iot is related is connecting to uh, fog and cloud that is also shown here okay so uh, that is the uh, so i you know i i think this is a really good and comprehensive uh, paper and with so many references i think let us see how many references more than 100 uh, it is coming up to Hundred and almost two hundred kind of references are there. Okay, so um, uh, with 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 that, uh, I think uh, this is uh, one of the research papers. And uh, let me try to uh, st uh, stop this uh, sharing and try to share one more uh, paper which I have. And uh, this is this is my own paper actually. uh just a moment please uh, somehow i don't seem to find that i had opened a word window i don't seem to find that window so i'll just uh, uh see where where that has gone um and uh, the title of my paper is key vulnerabilities in iot a holistic view okay and this was published in a, as a book chapter in the iji global okay so uh just a moment some of that window has vanished okay i think i should be able to share it now so it's not it uh, visible sir Uh, just a moment. Sure, sir. Uh, yes. Now it should be visible. Yes, sir. Yes, what document, right. sir? Right. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, uh, so uh, this is uh, the uh, chapter in uh, IGI Global. Uh, it's a book, and uh, our article. So again, you know, if you want to get the complete reference with respect to this. then you can just go to google scholar and you click and search for this uh, paper and you will be able to get the publication details of this book chapter okay so here we are uh, taking a holistic view and i think so i think i don't have too much of time so let me just uh, uh, quickly uh, go forward into this 
and we have one kind of a uh, table here and this table is the important aspect wherein we are considering all the aspects of the iot ecosystem so our holistic view why we say it's a holistic view is because we are looking at all of these the sensor the actuator the devices the gateway and the middleware and that's why it's being called as a holistic view uh, and we consider so uh, where, what is the iot architecture which we are considering that is being shown here wherein uh, now you are having this uh, application at the top middleware in between connecting to a gateway which in turn gateways there may be not just one there may be several gateways and the gateways are connecting to devices and the sensors and the actuators at the bottom so this is the broad uh, architecture which we are considering and here we go through the various layers i think you all have studied the mqtt and then we are seeing here some some vulnerabilities which are at the uh, mqtt layer okay so basically if the mqtt broker is not having proper authorization control okay and not doing proper authorization checks then it will be vulnerable to the attack okay so so many kinds of uh, attacks which are there now http attacks are also there and relate as i told you earlier you know so many protocols are there every protocol will have an attack okay so here we are mentioning just a, a few of the application level protocols of the iot that is coap and xmpp kind of attacks which are also being listed here okay and uh, these these are more of, of this type of the attacks okay uh, the remote code execution attacks and the elevation of privilege attacks okay uh, the peer to peer uh, vulnerabilities okay the exploitation of that buffer flow uh, okay remote code execution so so many types of the attacks are being mentioned okay and here are our prescriptions that you know what are the challenges and uh, how this iot deployment can can be made use of and all that okay so yeah, please remember i have mentioned attack surface okay so this is the kind of survey on the attack surface and the coverages of the attack surfaces and things like that okay so that is the overview of that okay some uh, statistics and uh, their respect to that finally then we have our references okay i think i am uh, close to the end of my time which is uh, there okay so i can stop here uh, and uh, i think we can take some questions so that this session i can uh, complete it out uh, so that others uh, the rest of the program can continue participants okay. can raise their hand if you have any questions in the meanwhile there are a couple of questions from the chat in the chat box sir uh, I, I one person is saying that you cannot get the article in the ipl access but uh, it is uh, no it is from ipl access itself which i have got that article uh, let me you know you can uh, what i will do is that uh, dr Nag uh, dr naginder yes, I, I, I along with my presentation i have downloaded these uh, papers so i will make one zip file and i will put it into that okay. and that, that can be shared with everybody isn't it yeah so, yeah i think sir but yeah huh. maybe yeah uh, we'll put some disclaimer and we'll share it sir oh uh, yeah yeah no problem uh, okay. sir we'll, we'll uh, yeah. put one disclaimer and we'll share it. okay 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 yeah yeah okay fine so that will take care of somebody's uh, okay let's let me see any other questions in the chat chat messages one is that uh, okay steps for maintaining trust management uh, okay so see trust management is that uh, how do you uh, first of all you have to add and build up the uh, trust evaluation whichever are the entities in the trust management whichever are the entities in the trust management which so you have to build up a trust reputation of every entity which is in the trust management okay and then uh, there are there are other ways in which one is a direct evaluation okay another is a indirect evaluation so there must be a mechanism of peer to peer uh, uh, evaluation of the trust management okay so so basically uh, that is what uh, in my presentation i have referred it to as direct in the indirect trust okay so the so direct indirect trust computation is the most important aspect of the trust management and then from that if you want to you may build up any learning system etc that is that is optional that is up to you okay then uh, somebody is asking cases or thoughts in the application of iot in the context of covid 19 
uh, I'm sorry that uh, I can't really say because uh, in the context of COVID-19, I am not uh, very much aware of any security or uh, privacy issues. Privacy issues would be there who, you know, people want, don't want to reveal that they have got the COVID-19, but how IoT is related to that, I, I can't say that, okay. Uh, one person is saying that he is doing research in the IoT DDoS attacks. Wonderful. And he is asking me to suggest the topics which is uh, going on in this topic. Okay, so see what happens in any uh, IoT DDoS is that you have to enroll uh, uh, lots of other, other IP addresses from which the attack will come. See, see what is a DDoS attack? DDoS means it is distributed attack. So the number of IP addresses which uh, I have from where that attack will be launched. Okay, that is a very wide set of IP addresses. Okay, but uh, the entire point of a uh, defense against a DDoS attack is that to be able to see that where is it that the attacks are coming and whether, so you cannot concentrate on the IP addresses. What you can do is that you can build a signature of the messages which are coming. So, so, uh, I mean, it's not easy for me to explain online like this, but what you have to do is that the message signatures have to come. Okay, how do you build a message signature? Is that what is the message content? You can build a hash code for that message content. You can you can look at the, uh, uh, the network information about that and things like that. From that, you can build message signatures. And then if you have a very uh, suitably strong firewall or things like that, then, then such messages, with that message signature can be isolated and they could be stopped. That is one way in which you might be able to stop a DDoS attack, okay? So that is that is a very general uh, kind of, a, I mean, general kind of, a, generic kind of an approach, okay? One more question then is the role of the IPv6 in the IoT security. Actually, IPv6 by itself has lots of security aspects built into it, okay? So IPv6 uh, security, we must study carefully. And if you build that into whichever IoT network and all which you're having, okay, you try to build up uh, the, the, the uh, sec security of the content, the payload, okay. Uh, you try to build up the uh, security for some of the routed addresses and things like that. Okay, so, but, but that's not, easy in the sense of for IoT because the main problem in IoT is the lack of uh, computation power and the, and the, and the, and the lack of uh, the uh, uh, energy to sustain the IoT device to keep working. All right. So you will have some trade-off. The trade-off which will be is that if I have more security, I should be also be able to sacrifice more of the energy power. Okay, so suppose if you, if you are having those devices wherein you know, their power sources are getting renewed, okay, then we may think of that having some more computation and some more energy resources uh, by which the uh, security can be um, uh, maintained to certain levels, okay. Okay, looks like... Uh, uh, yeah, Srinivasa, any other yes. messages? Or another any other queries? Uh, yes, sir. What, what is the role of IPv6 in IoT security? That's what, sir. Ah, that was the last one which I have addressed. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, I am uh, doing research in IoT distributed DDoS attacks. Can you please? Yes, sir? yes, yes. That also I have. Yes, uh, that's all, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, fine. So then, uh, I think uh, I'm I'm done with my part of it. Okay, so I have, uh, I have known, I try to show how uh, these uh, things are, uh, you know, just see, like I said, it's an overview. Okay, so I've give, given a glimpse of the literature, I've given limbs, a glimpse of uh, what it is, uh, what are the important issues and aspects which are there. Okay, so I, I suppose uh, I will share these uh, research articles and then it can be uh, distributed and the people can go get into the details of their own. Okay, so I'm 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 done from my side. Okay, unless some other questions come, I I am done from my side. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Right. Thank, Thank you very you. much for sharing your uh, valuable knowledge, and uh, yeah.
so i think uh, there are no uh, no questions sir yet okay 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 so we will wind up the session sir there fine fine okay thank you thank you very much sir yeah thank right, thank you bye take care sir bye, bye. right thank you bye thank you sir um, a small announcement for the participants please uh, today we are uh, uh, as per the schedule we will be conducting the online test at 2:30 pm so uh, the participants who are officially registered in the sense that uh, on the portal and we have approved those registrations uh, please kindly take part in the examination and we complete it so of course it is an online test but we are we are giving sufficient time for that and uh, uh, yeah most likely there will not be any problems but if you foresee any problems please let us know during the test if you are having any problem there so that is one thing and uh, the other thing is um, uh, in the coming session that is the next session uh, almost at the start uh, beginning of the session we will be sharing the attendance for you so including today's attendance please so uh, if you are having any uh, doubts or any clarifications are required for that attendance please let us know after the end of that particular session so that uh, before we post the attendance on the atel portal uh, again uh, of course uh, updations cannot be possible so we will not be able to do any modifications in the later stage and it will be very much uh, troublesome for us as well as for you to download your uh, certificates so our plan is we will today upload your attendance your test marks and we also request you to submit uh, feedback on the atel portal of course you are every session you are giving the feedback but uh, in addition to this, this uh, there is one more requirement from your side Uh, so once we upload our uh, uh, attendance and the test marks uh, you are supposed to give the feedback of the program then only you will be able to download your uh, certificates so these three uh, processes we has to be completed by today afternoon so that you at least uh, by today evening you should be able to collect your certificate or at least by tomorrow morning so that is what our plan is so if you have any doubts please let us know so now uh, i am available online so please do for, uh, post your doubts or uh, clarify if you require any notes so we have only one session is left for our program to be completed so and again sir would it be possible to show one sample demo of execution of whole cycle of uh, freezing yeah yeah definitely ma'am uh, uh, yeah so uh, i think uh, those who are ha yeah please give us a procedure of exam uh, i will uh, come to the freezing process after the end of the next session so uh, those who are uh, requesting to that please kindly hold on after the next session end please definitely i will show you and uh, the procedure of exam is uh, how much attendance percentage is required for receiving the certificate minimum of uh, 80% of attendance so we are given in the brochure and the atel portal also gives you minimum uh, minimum 80% of uh, Uh, attendance is required please minimum 80% of attendance and uh, minimum of 60% of marks 60 percentage of marks are, uh, are to be obtained in the online test so duration of the test a 40 minutes duration i am just typing on the chat window also so that you can be clear for you duration of test is 40 minutes and 30 mcqs duration of test is 40 minutes and 30 mcqs for a total of 30 marks for a total of the demos there is no negative marking just one positive mark for all the uh, for each question so yeah. uh, that is the reason yesterday we had a mock exam of course uh, in the mock exam uh, 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 please uh, remember uh, i have received 125 responses application number is not the same for everyone your registration application number is going to be uh, different of course uh, you you please mention your name mobile number also if you are not sure about your application numbers and your email anyway is going to be mandatory your email 
So yesterday for the mock test, I have received 125 responses, but uh, around uh, 10 responses I have received in the late night. Uh, in the late night means in the evening and the light, uh, late nights, of course, uh, two responses are received in the late night. So uh, please do not uh, go into that direction, please, to submission the answers in the late nights, please. Because we want to complete your uh, submissions by today evening on the Atal portal. Uh, I couldn't attend the FDP for one day. Will it be considered for receiving the certificate? Yes, if you are only absent for one day, if you are present for the remaining four days, it will be counted as for your 80% place. So one day is uh, is not com uh, it's not that all five days should be attending the FDP. That's why uh, one day is uh, relaxable. There is no problem in that. I am from mechanical engineering. This is my first course. Please suggest so that I can develop in future. See, uh, uh, Dr. D. Sarkar, sir, uh, my suggestion is if you are from the mechanical, uh, uh, of course, uh, nowadays, uh, uh, mechatronics, if you might have seen the mechatronics or your CAD or your CAM, whatever it may be, those CAD devices or you are, uh, uh, if you are going for the designing as well as if you are going to really handle those uh, you know, CAD devices and the CAM devices, they can be uh, controllable using your IoT. So basically, this IoT is going to be a subset of cyber physical systems. So the cyber physical systems is the most important thing that is needed. Of course, there is a small difference between cyber physical systems and IoT. Uh, for a mechanical engineering graduates, I mean, so suppose mechanical engineering background people, so you have to control or you have to manage your uh, electromechanical devices. And those electromechanical devices have to be controlled with the principles of our IoT only. So uh, yes, IoT is the most uh, appropriate because IoT itself is an interdisciplinary. This interdisciplinary uh, topic of IoT, it involves electronics, mechanical, electrical, instrumentation, communication, networking, data processing, and data science. All, all these fields have been co combined together, even pharmacy. Pharmacy also can ease on the IoT aspects. See, basically, any suggested book. So IoT by Bagga, uh, Professor Bagga, our Indian author has written the IoT book. So that can be preferable for a beginner. And uh, uh, if you, uh, Rajkumar, uh, this is the one book. Uh, you can see Rajkumar a book. So this book, actually, I reviewed this one uh, for the publication purpose. I, I received a complimentary copy. So you can refer for Rajkumar or your Bagga, or uh, if you can hold on for one, uh, another one year, then definitely my book is also going to come. Yeah, any other doubts, please? So I'm not uh, canvassing or not marketing myself. So, so just for your information, please, yeah. Uh, Nayanda sir, could you explain the role of IoT in Tripoli too? Yes, uh, Prabha, uh, R Prabha, yes. See, um, Tripoli is the most uh, uh, dominant field in the IoT, as far as my experience is concerned, please. So dominant, when I say dominant, the Tripoli concept of uh, your electrical, electricity equations, yeah, your electricity equations, your instrumentation, and the way you circuit and you way you prepare your IoT system, until unless you don't have the uh, E and the electronics knowledge, it will be too difficult to develop your own IoT product, IoT system itself. So most of the uh, things, it's not that only machine learning or it's not only communication or networking is what IoT is, no. So uh, I, will, I will suggest something for uh, uh, many of you if you are in this uh, online presentation. Uh, one thing, one basic thing, please, everybody should uh, an under, have an understanding that if you can understand what a signal is, signal, when I say signal, there's electronic signal. So this signal philosophy, if you are clear, then your IoT system is clear for you. If your signal is not clear, then it will be very difficult to prepare your understand an IoT system. So if you can manage and control, once you understand the signal, signal means your analog and digital signal. If that is two things are clear for you fundamentally. If your uh, analog and digital signals concepts are clear for you, you can play with any sensor. It's not that only temperature, humidity, 
or your gas sensor or your, any type of sensors or actuators doesn't matter anything the basic philosophy behind this any sensor is on the analog or your digital if you are clear with your analog and your digital signal no matter whatever the sensor you use it and you if you, you can manage and you can control your own sig signal and you can process that signal that signal processing is nothing but data processing itself so the signal analysis is nothing but data analysis itself i can say in iot themes of application signal is equal to data simple in electronics form it is signal in your digital form it is data so both signal analysis techniques data analysis techniques if you see your data mining your machine learning techniques more or less philosophically they are same with your signal analysis techniques there is no nothing difference except a few concepts of your electronics principles so please i request all of you please concentrate on your fundamentals the fundamental is what we are anybody should understand on the iot system development if you are beginning your career in any of this field either in your mechanical or triple e or instrumentation or pharmacy or or even in your humanities or your other sciences field basically the iot if you are going to have an uh, preparation of your iot system you should have the knowledge and the strong uh, philosophy to be understood on what is called as a signal signal if you can understand what is a signal is you can play with this you can play with it as you like it for your application so that is what the most important thing because the sensor is going to give you a signal itself i hope you, uh, you got the point i think yes yeah, some questions like um, those having 80% of attendance they will get the certificate or in addition to that they will also fulfill the, both 80% of attendance and as well as 60% of marks both are required place for you to get the certificate it's not that only one no both are both are it is a conjunction it is an and attendance and test both are required please i, I repeat once again uh, dr sesh babu gauri both are required i hope uh, um, i hope it is clear now yeah sesh babu yes both are required it is mandatory compulsory attendance and test test is very simple what are the topics if you are attended the sessions you will be able to write it that's what i feel it so don't worry about the test you just simply attempt it that's it automatically you will answer the questions that's what i suppose yeah can we know our updated attendance sir yes i'm giving the all five days attendance in the beginning of the next session please sir after completing and publishing your book yes 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 sir uh, iot book uh, actually it is uh, it is in the process only now i'll definitely update you from the fdp sir looking forward for you yeah yes definitely jamir bashagara i'll definitely update you no problem so just uh, uh, take a rest for a while and uh, be relaxed so we'll start the next and the last and the final session of our uh, program in the, at 12 o'clock all oh, uh, yeah 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 sorry sinwa sir yes sir sir yeah, they are asking for yeah i will start the poll sir and uh, somebody is asking like what is the title of the uh, book that you are authoring <laughs> it is a uh, iot design and principles place iot design and principles okay sir uh, now for i will beginner actually yeah it is for the beginner purpose only not for an uh, expert in iot for a beginner only uh, so iot design and principles that you can mostly by the end of this year you'll be able to get it but if you want to immediately have some books already there is there in the market please you can refer to either uh, iot by baga and as well as rajkumar internet of things architecture and design principles by uh, rajkumar sir may i start i'm typing it on the yeah yeah please go ahead sir now the poll is up participants are requested to give their feedback
I, I am just referring to this particular book in the, for the beginner's purpose to so have some idea. There are some case studies and. Sir, uh, please keep the book a bit far from the camera. The title is not visible. Yeah. Is it clear, sir? Now. Yes, sir. So a bit up, sir. Could you please? Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is a, a Megra Hill Publishers. This is a Megra Hill Publishers. Any book with hands-on examples in Arduino or Raspberry Pi, sir? Hands-on experience uh, on the Arduino and Raspberry Pi because they are independent together. Both together, you not. Uh, I don't know whether both together are there or not. Uh, but individually, they are there. See, uh, I, I prefer for you there is on the website Spark Fun. Usually, this is an electronics manufacturing company. For Arduino. Please refer to SparkFun website. The tutorials and the documentations are there. So uh, it is very authenticated and uh, you can, uh, this is for the Arduino please. Yeah, any other doors, please? So we'll again meet at 12 noon exactly. Uh, my book, it is not, it is uh, copyrights are there, ma'am, for that Internet of Things uh, with uh, COVID 19. So, uh, yeah, various case studies that gives you various case studies. Uh, copyright access, otherwise I can show you the word files also, that is not a problem, but uh, the other sir is there, so uh, you please raise the uh, thing with the next session, sir, so sir will guide us how to proceed further. So, uh, could you please share the details of the book in chat box? Uh, which book, ma'am? Uh, Prabha, Prabha or uh, which book you are referring, ma'am? Already Internet of Things I already shared to you. Basic book only, that is basics only. No, no, no. Uh, I'll give the link for you. Just hold on. Uh, for the Arduino, you please refer to this SparkFun website. See, for the Arduino, please refer to the SparkFun. The SparkFun website. Yeah. So we'll meet at 12 noon, please. I'll get back to you again in the 12 noon. Yeah, thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir.